friend, this is Max Eberly, and welcome back to another instructional pool video. That's Dave Bodenheimer breaking. He's a good friend of mine, and this video is a practice session, nine ball, of us playing in Las Vegas at Griff's Pool Hall in Las Vegas. And um, this is basically a highlight reel. This whole video is going to be with some commentary. Uh, about the shots. Now the table's relatively fast. It's a diamond, nine foot diamond with uh, some Monas cloth. Um, just can't get any better. And uh, diamond and some Monas. So we're starting out with a couple thin cut shots. That one you want to focus on the speed control. You know, of course you're going to make sure you make the ball. And uh, with that nine and five there, we had to make sure not to come too far back and forth across the table. Uh, now that one I ended up pretty long compared to most of the time where I want to play position. So maybe it was because I was stretching, but yeah, I was able to be a little more accurate instead of just totally slow rolling that because the distance was so great, I hit it a little bit harder go down to the bottom rail and then and then back up off the rail a little bit for the five. Uh, the cue balls stay on line a little bit better when you hit it harder your accuracy improves. Uh, that's one thing you hear Billy and Cardona talk about on the AccuStats commentary a lot. Uh, of course once you get once you hit the ball too hard you could possibly uh, sacrifice some accuracy if uh, if your stroke is out of control so you want to work on your stroke and make sure that when, even at higher speeds with your stroke it stays online uh, but if you do hit the ball a little left or right you're going to get a little more deflection so at some point you, you're going to want to limit the amount of spin if you're going to hit it hard um, or you're just going to want to make sure you have incredible accuracy and that comes through practice uh, nothing is for free in this game. You can't buy a straight, smooth, accurate stroke. You got to work on it. All right, here's Dave. That's a good shot. Nice speed control for the two. Just got to pull back a little bit, I think. Get a, get that seven out of the way. Has a nice angle to come off the rail with low or low left for the four. Uh, the nine ball combo is sitting pretty good. The five nine, unless he gets an angle on the four, then he can just go one rail around the, around the five. Uh, or if he's on this side of the four like he, he is now, he can come across for the five in the corner. So now it's just a matter of keeping an angle. Okay, I don't know what happened uh, with that five ball. Like I said, I edited this a little bit uh, a couple weeks ago, and now I'm just adding the sound right now. All right, so he kept his accuracy by keeping his Q level instead of jacking up and um, accepted a little bit longer shot on the eight. All right, nine ball down. Good shooting, Dave. Yeah, we call that uh, cinching a, a shot. You, you make it make your shot you don't sacrifice the shot um, by trying to get perfect shape and you accept a longer shot you can do this once in a while and as long as you make the longer shot then you're back in business to uh, continue your run um, although I recommend try to stay in line most of the time and not always be far from your object ball because um, you'll be fighting against the uh, distance all the time and uh, it will have a hard time Playing against players who control the cue ball real well, they're going to be running out all the time real easy on you. So 
instead of being that guy who's always shooting long, tough shots, be the one who's controlling the cue ball and playing good position. And then when you need to make a long shot once in a while, then you get up and make it. And let's face it, this nine foot table, uh, there's not any shot that's really too long if you work on your game. Um, you just compare it, compare it to a snooker table. Now there you have, you're gonna have longer shots compared to the nine foot table. If you're always playing on a bar box, then the nine foot table is gonna seem like a snooker table. So that's the disadvantage of the bar box player who only plays on a bar box. which I recommend don't become the bar box player. Uh, you should, if you like a bar box, go ahead and play on it, but you should at least every day, if not five days a week, play on a nine foot table as well. So you don't become that one dimensional player and then become hopeless on a nine foot table or helpless. Um, so it's good to work on the nine foot table also and even get to uh, a Chinese Pool table which is nine feet but it's the pockets are like a nine foot snooker table or or get to a snooker table and practice with pool balls on a snooker table a 10 foot or a 12 foot snooker table okay so let's get back to the game um, just pulling across over there ended up with a good angle some you know you can pull across the line of position as long as you do it with good speed control so I say the rules are meant to be broken. Um, again, that, that one's across, but the speed control is decent. The line of position, I avoided the scratch, is, um, is a good guideline, and players who can play down the line, going towards the ball or towards the position line, or, or away from the ball, uh, on, still on or near the position line, it's always a good thing, and you'll find your top players do that often, and they use the rails to come into the ball. But when you need, or when you want to come across the line, and you need good speed control, you want to have that speed control capability so that you can do it. And uh, sometimes I'll even practice like that, shooting the wrong shot, but still getting position because of the speed control. All right, so decent break. Have a shot on the one. Just got to cut it a little bit. Uh, and then two's right there. Looks like a, a good three rail position route for shape on the three. Um, but I decided to go this way, so now I could just float down to the bottom rail and, and then back out for the three if I want. Or just no rail at all. You know, when you're playing good, you got the speed of the table. Generally, it's a good idea to don't don't even use a rail if you don't have to, and then don't use two rails if you only need one, or and don't don't use three rails if you can only use two. Uh, there, but there's a difference in styles. Some players like to use a lot of rails. Um, it's gonna you you got to really know know your way around the rails to do that, like a billiard player. Um, but it's a good it's a good practice to be able to play without using a lot of rails uh, because it can be done. Uh, that one was a little bit soft. I'm gonna have to chop this eight ball in. You're gonna pick which pocket you want to make the nine on a shot like this. You're not just gonna cut the eight ball in and hope for position on the nine. You're actually gonna look with your eyes back and forth, back and forth, and then pick a landing spot. And that, that's how I got positioned there. It wasn't an accident. So you assume you're going to make the ball. Assume you're going to have good speed control. You plan it out. You get down with your plan. And then you try to execute it. And it's really like that with every shot. All right, so mid-rack. All right, so this one is going to be a draw. And I could punch it off the rail by cutting the five or just draw it more straight back for the six like that. And you want to work on your draw shot speed control using uh, draw shot drills. 
that was that was straight in that's why I didn't didn't pull it over to the uh, left more uh, but it ended up straight in so all I had to do is draw it back a little bit and the nine all right another break shot we're doing the uh, US Open nine ball racking situation with the nine on the spot and looks like we're not even using a magic rack but that's how it is in the in the, a lot of the big tournaments now is a magic rack with the uh, nine on the spot or one of the racking templates it doesn't have to be the magic rack it could be the outsville racking template turtle rack the magic rack but we're just using the uh, wooden rack in this case all right so it came up a little short for the side pocket uh, but I can go around the table three rails play for a cut shot on the three a little close to the rail but I have a little room to work with here so now it's just back and forth um, in that case no need to try too hard and uh, go three rails but it looks like um, I hit the ball too hard. And uh, it's time to kick the ball. So here what you're doing is you're trying to find that center line of the angle where it, where you see the angle in, angle out. And once, once you see that, you'll see a spot on the rail. And then you just try to hit center ball. A little bit, little bit of, uh, I like to hit it a little high if the angle's not too wide and I uh, find that I'll, I'll hit just about all of my one rail kicks using that system angle in angle out stay down follow through no left or right spin just a nice nice roll into the rail and then, and then back out uh, once the angle gets real wide you got to be careful all right so Dave looks like he's going to take advantage of uh, the shot here and just and roll out here now there I don't know if he's trying to go down to the end rail or not or and back out or just roll it in uh, but left me a shot I think I was trying to get her get uh, get by that ball without without even touching it and now uh, Dave won the game Now, ideally, you have your cue ball up off off the uh, bottom side of the table like this, but he's got a shot at this two ball. He, he, he's got a chance to win this game if he can make the two and uh, get anywhere out near the middle of the table for the three ball. Now that ball might actually be cuttable in the in the side with extreme left spin, uh, but not easy. That was a real nice combo, actually. So let's see if he can make the three and get back up for the six. He can come straight up and don't even touch the side, up and down the table, using the end rails, or put a little bit of right and go to the side rail, back down to the chalk. All right, left me a shot. Now, what am I going to do here to uh, get shape on this six ball? I uh, could just draw it, draw it out maybe if I have a little bit of an angle, or punch it to the rail. Maybe looks like what I'm doing. Yeah, punch it two rails, and then into a nice position area. Um, but inside of a position area, you want to pick a spot. Now that one I just hit it soft with a lot of spin, allowed the spin to carry me towards towards the seven ball where I wanted it to be. Um, so I didn't have to punch it out.
Okay, all right, well, into the next game. Looks like Dave's running out. So this video is brought to you by ProPoolAcademy.com, the membership website where you can learn fundamentals, strategy, drills, all kinds of stuff to help your game improve in as short amount of time as possible. All right, so got an angle, just gotta hit this one soft, stay down, make the six, and now got a few options here. Could come two rails, shoot the eight in the left-hand side, or just use high right off of one rail. There, it went the two rail route. Um, now just a stop shot. Cue ball came a little far, so just hold it up. Find your line of aim before you get down. That's really important. See how you see how I'm coming down when I'm already on the line of aim. Break shot, any shot. First, you want to find the line that you're going to shoot down while you're standing, and then. You come down on that line of aim and uh, as you uh, put your left foot out if you're right-handed but you, you keep your eyes on that line as you come down and try to keep your head down as much as you can uh, during your actual stroke That was a pretty thin cut shot. Cue ball's flying around the table because of the, the speed. Looks like I barely got a shot on this four. And I could just go straight across real soft between the six and nine. There it is. And just take a little bit longer shot on the five. But it's a decent little angle to pull out. A little bit of a, a little bit of low stun. Now if I can just draw back up on the other side of the seven a little bit so I can float down for the nine, I'll be in good shape. Looks like I came a little bit far, so um, I might have to go around around the nine and shoot it in the other corner, in the lower left corner. And that was on a good angle to do that. Um, an another shot would have been to go around three rails. Okay, so this is a cut break. The nine's on the spot. Using a little bit of low right, trying to make the one in the side and the corner ball. Um, I think the corner ball just went. Uh, so I have a shot on the one, but the five ball is uh, blocking me blocking my cue ball route unless I can draw hit it soft enough with draw so it curves and misses that five completely or play it off the five is another option play the cue ball off the five which is what I did <laughs> and made the nine it's a nice little bonus got position I don't know if we're going to spot the nine or not uh, okay so yeah uh, but you see how I got position off the nine You don't have to see those extra object balls as problems or obstacles. What you want to do is learn how to recognize where the cue ball is going to go into that ball and then plan a position route off of that part of the ball. So as if that ball is the first rail that you're going off of. And uh, you'll be surprised how accurate you can be with playing position off another ball. And a lot of that just comes from experience. You know, so just pay attention to what the cue ball does and you're gonna learn 
what to look for on on every shot, and uh, you'll, you'll just see which side of the the ball uh, the cue ball is going to go into, how fast it's going to come off of that ball, and uh, be able to adjust and guess accordingly. But it's an educated guess based on experience, so it's really more than a guess. Okay, what do we have here? A thin shot on the one. Might have to go up and down the table here. Or could hit it pretty soft. All right, so it looks like out of control there. Uh, now if I could just make this, it looks like the six ball is going to hold the cue ball up for, and give me a shot on the three ball. Okay. Well, it, it held it up a little bit. At least I still have a, a good line. Okay. Well, I'm making balls. At least I'm still I'm still staying in the game just by pocketing balls and uh, keeping some kind of a shot. Went a little bit far, but I'm, I'm finally starting to get back in line here. As far as not off the rail and not too long of a shot, but this is you don't you want to respect a shot like this. Bear down and uh, focus. And I held the cue ball up with with low or or low a little bit inside. I think it was probably just straight draw. And I wanted to stay up on on the other side of the six, so I could just pull down here for the seven ball. Uh, which looks a little bit straight so the, the thing about these pool tables okay I had a little bit of an angle is uh, you have a little bit of leeway with the pocket where you can create an angle even if you don't have one and that'll help that'll help give you position on the next ball Okay, this looks like a nice zigzag pattern, zigzag across the table because of the angle. Naturally, brought the cue ball over there as long as you uh, use use the correct spin, which in some cases is no spin, or it might be a, just a, a little bit of uh, left. And uh, that was looks like looked like low right. I was able to throw the ball in the pocket a little bit, hit it as full as I can. And uh, not too hard because if I hit it a little bit harder, the cue ball would have scratched. So I had to hit it at the right speed to give the cue ball enough chance to bend back and uh, avoid that side pocket. But you also can't hit it too soft that there's no spin on the object ball when it gets, I mean, no spin on the cue ball when it gets to the object ball or not enough spin. Okay, a little bank shot. Now that was way too close to scratching. Looks like I was trying to go into to the rail first and then spin down to the nine before before that side pocket. Uh, okay, thin shot on the four into the side. All right, that was an interesting pattern. A little kind of a natural. It doesn't come up all the time, but if keep your eye out for a shot like that, that might help you run out one time. Okay, so there's options here. You could follow forward, go to the side rail, and back across the table, shoot the seven in the in the left pocket. Uh, looks like I had a decent angle just to put a little some left hand spin and uh, float it down. That one is important. You don't want to hit the ball too fat, nor too thin. So it's 
even though it looked easy, you, you have to make a good contact on that object ball to get, get the right uh, speed and direction off of it. A little high inside English on that eight ball to get to the nine. And here you just, that was okay because I got past the the uh, side pocket. Okay, well, I think I was trying to hit rail first. If I hit the end rail first and then the five, the cue ball would have come out nicely for the six ball. So now I'm, uh, I'm forced to really bear down just to make it and uh, didn't wasn't able to do too much with the cue ball so now I have to just uh, you know take your shots as they come sometimes when you're out of line you're gonna have to make a few tough shots in a row you just have to accept the fact and bear down and, and keep trying to keep your cue ball in uh, at least decent position to make the next shot All right, one five combo. Main thing is control that one ball. Don't let it get fly out of out of the area of the pocket. Now there I'm playing the cue ball. Looks like to be near the rail because that two ball is near the pocket. So it's not a good shot to. I don't have a shot to play the cue ball off the rail after the two. So I needed it near the rail before the two, so I could then then come out here for the three. So here, uh, if you practice your draw shot, this is a standard position shot. Playing nine ball, this is going to come up all the time. And you want your speed control down so that you can not only get position to make the next ball, but an angle so you can get to your, your third ball, which in this case is, is the seven. Um, you see how I ended up on the right side of that seven? That's... I wanted to do that so I could float over to the left for the eight and uh, a nice angle to come off the rail for the nine. A little bit far, but that's that's a, that's where I'm coming across the position. I did I wasn't really going down the line of position. So that's where you need good speed control. And I hit it a little bit on the outside realm of, of the speed control that I'd want, but but uh, just enough still to be in uh, decent shape. But definitely trying to get uh, straighter in on that nine ball. Okay, this, this looks like a good situation. Have a decent angle on the one. Kind of straight, so I might have to hit it a little bit hard to pop out off the rail, shoot the two ball in the same pocket. And getting from the three to the four looks like it's going to be a key key shot of this rack. So I have an angle here. As long as I don't hit that seven, I'm fine. So I could come out this one rail between the five and the seven, the blue seven. Or I could try to draw it a little bit more and go between the seven and four, shoot the four. But uh, I decided to go the first way and zigzag across for the four and now it's just a matter of um, in line pretty good so just keep a nice angle looks like i'm actually kind of straight on this one but i could go to the end rail with high right and come out for an angle on the seven to get down for the eight ball See now the line of position coming off the rail towards the eight ball. That's what I mean by line of position. All right, Dave.
Got a chance to run out here. We could uh, go one rail off the two with high right. Go on a line straight towards that three ball. Uh, left-handed, not bad for left-handed, but he wanted a little bit more spin. Let's see if he can make this three ball and get back in shape here to run out. I'm gonna take a look at it. Yeah, you want to take time on on these shots, and uh, because you make a shot like this and get back in line, oh, he's, he's jumping it. But anyway, if you make you know one good shot, could set you up to win the game. And look at that, ooh, with a blocker, and he gets shape on the four. Great shot. Now the trickiest thing looks like getting from the six to the seven. So what's gonna determine that is, is how good of a shape you get on the five so that you can get really good shape on the six so it's easy to get to the seven. Um, where people get in, in trouble is they, they, they don't give that position shot from the four to the five enough credit and then they end up funny on the five which makes them end up funny on the six and then they have no shot on the seven. So every shot you want to maintain good position. Well, I ended up below the eight to get on the nine. Uh, maybe just a little bit soft. It cost him the eight ball. Uh, he might have been able to go around the table on that one uh, with, with low left and go uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rails. Okay, so that right there is a billiard shot. Rail first. Uh, looks like I hit it just about perfect. Definitely too close to the nine ball, though. I was trying to be about two feet from that nine ball. So that means I hit the rail, hit the ball a little bit fat. If I had hit the rail a little bit up more before the nine, I'd be further away from the nine. Of course, the other thing is you don't want to hit it too, too thin and go around three rails and scratch. Almost a perfect shot. Well, I have a chance to make the nine here. Bank the one into the nine. You want to think about hiding the cue ball too in, in a situation like this. Oh, maybe I wasn't going for that nine. Just, just going for the one. Okay, got a little fortunate there to hit the seven and still have a shot. Uh, but you see, this one put myself in trouble there. I, I needed a little bit more right spin so I could come off the rail, shoot the four in the other pocket. Uh, so either that or I hit it a little bit too full. But was able to get back in line. This one you want to try to get uh, real close to straight in. I have an angle so I can flow it down. Playing on a diamond table. Uh, the US Open this year, 2019, is going to be uh, on diamond tables actually for the next two years. That's a great table made in the US. All right. Okay, pretty good line to come across. And now it's just a, a zigzag two rail shot and then the cue ball comes off that rail there on the line of position. 
but I ended up a little straight. So I hit the rail a little further down because I'd like to be above that eight. So now I had to hit it with a low right to spin the ball out of trouble. And uh, I'll take this shot, all things considered. It's a decent shot, but it didn't have to be this tough. Another one down. Shooting on the one ball to the three. How are we going to get on the four? High left come out? Or can I punch it to the rail to the right and get around that seven? Shoot the four. Looks like I'm going top spin. Yeah, uh, just one rail. Okay. I had more angle than I thought there. So this one. Uh, Kind of a little angle there, so to use use high left. Yeah, that was the shot. You got to trust your spin and ability to make that shot with the with the uh, deflection. So you have to know your cue real well, and just hit it like you know it's going in. There we go. Two rail position shot out for the six. Got the option here to shoot the six in the side or in the corner. Okay, so that's going across the line of position and a little bit too far. So now I have to cut, cut the seven and uh, be careful not to scratch. Okay, turned out pretty good as far as with the nine. I might have been trying to go around it or, or I knew I was just going to go into it and had to make the ball. Nice natural little shot, three rails position. Uh, the toughest thing in this rack, well, there's a couple of them, is uh, the five and six. What are we going to do with the six ball? Are we going to shoot a nine ball combo? Or are we going to try to shoot the six in the side? The combo looks pretty good. matter of uh, lining it up pretty good and then trust your trust your lineup and deliver a good stroke when you're shooting these combos okay all right here's a uh, back and forth shot plan your route just make sure you make that object ball Now it looks like it might be a scratch off the six if I just roll off the left ed edge of it, cut the ball to the right. I might need to put uh, some draw to avoid this side, this corner pocket. Nope, I had enough room to just float it. And might be able to just Pinch it with draw. Nope, now I'm uh, starting to have fun trying to make both both balls. It's actually not a bad shot. If it presents itself to make the eight ball and the nine ball, then you may as well do it if there's not many other options because the nine ball was kind of blocking the... Uh, position route off the eight. Well, 
nope, that was, uh, I think he took it for granted on that one. And uh, was nice enough to leave me this triple combo. Yeah, when you make a bank shot, you can still play position. So plan your position like always and uh, plan your bank shot. Keep your head down, follow through. Now that, that shot right there, the one rail off the end rail is a really important shot because you have to be able to control your direction by tiny adjustments with side spin off the end rail. Okay, now that one was, was uh, just speed, a little out of speed go three rails here with right spin or just cut it nice and soft okay I'm trying something I think I was trying to go four rails cut it in and go around three rails but it went a little bit long on me I did probably didn't have the angle for that so we're just having fun here playing some nine ball really it's not a serious match but you still try hard and still concentrate even when you're practicing but also when you're practicing you can try new stuff uh, stuff you might not try in a match like low percentage shots or, or just shots you want to see what's going to happen practice is the time to do it and my friend that is going to end this practice nine ball session thank you for tuning in and uh, check out maxeberly.com for all my instructional stuff. And I'll see you in the next video.